There are some things I may not know. There are some places that I can not go. But I am sure. Oh, yes. Of this one thing, oh yes, I know God is real, for I can feel Him deep within, yes, God is real. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. I give all the honor to Jesus Christ, I have my life, all honor to Father the Walker, the name of Walker, and our honor is due. Now let's bow our heads and humble hearts. Thank God for waking us up this morning. Thank God for starting us on the way. I thank God for allowing all of us here to be the, at church tonight. I thank God for protecting us from all sickness, hurt, harm, and danger, especially for the great prophet. I thank God for everything you've done in our lives, everything we have to do. And I thank for the church that we're going to try as far tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Again, God is real. Because so I can feel him in my soul. You see the church. Thank God for being God all by himself. And thank God for his manifold blessings to the True Light Church. I've told you in times past we are a special church. And through the vision that God gave me concerning uh, Spartanburg and the church here, I was able to put that vision into action and today little true light right. is $52,000 richer Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. and if you don't mind Hallelujah. give your leader a hand to I have an important uh, teaching tonight, and I want to say to the YouTube viewers, thank you again uh, for watching. And I want to also say, the vote that comes up in November, I believe November the 5th, yeah. is critically important to the eternal kingdom of God. I say that in this concept. You have the choice to vote for a Hindu woman who has blasphemed the word of God, yeah. advocates baby murder, calls it abortion if you want, but it's baby murder. Amen. Five weeks after conception, there's a heartbeat yeah. that's independent of the biological mother. Right. That makes it a living soul. And it's the living soul God placed it there. And every soul belongs to God. Yeah. Yeah, man. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah. Nobody has a right to kill anything, and especially a little baby. Yeah. Whether it's on the outside of the belly or the inside of the belly, you don't have a right to kill it. And murder still is murder. That's right. And when you contemplate on taking a light, that's called premeditated murder. Yeah, yeah. You think about it and then you go ahead and do it. There's nothing more hideous than a woman who will kill a little innocent baby. 
Now, what people don't understand, even that little baby is protected by the word of God. Right. Yeah. Jeremiah said, before you entered your mother's womb, I knew your name. All right, how we yeah. Now, if you knew the name of the person, that person is a person, That's whether right. it's uh, a thousand years before conception or a thousand years after conception. Yeah. God still knew your name. And if you yeah. knew your name, you were a person, you were somebody. Yes. So to kill a little tiny baby, mm. it takes a lot of courage. Yeah. I couldn't do it. Nope. So to say a woman has a right, that's her right to take a life. I don't care how they pretty they, they twist it and turn it and make it look so, man, it looks so innocent. Uh -huh. No, when you kill something, you have taken a life, and especially when we're talking about a human soul. Yeah. So you have a choice to vote between a Hindu woman who's for killing babies and for same-sex marriage. Yes. Yeah. And brags about it. Uh -huh. I mean, she ain't silent about it. She no. brags about it. Now, how can you be for same-sex marriage when God said he made male and female and told them to go and replenish the earth, multiply have children. Yes. Two men can't have children nope. biologically together. And two women cannot have children biologically together. Nope. Or in bed if you want to put it that way. If you want to put it bluntly. Okay. So it takes a man and a woman to complete the cycle of the new birth. Right. When it's done in the sight of God, it's called holy matrimony. Yeah. That establishes the family unit. And the family unit is the backbone of the church of God. Yeah. When you destroy that, you have a tendency to destroy the vision of the church of God. Right. Now, on the other hand, you've got a choice to vote for President Trump. All right. You may say, well, he did this and he was a womanizer. Well, at least he was a womanizer. All right, how we got? I mean, he had his mind in the right direction. Though his moral code might have not been to the highest. All right. But I said before, God wasn't looking for a preacher when he chose him. He was looking for somebody with some courage to stand up and defend the church of God. So we could have a right to speak freely with us saith the Lord. Right, Father. So you got a choice. You can vote for Trump. Who tries to follow the Bible, he's against baby murder, he's yeah. against homosexuality. Yeah. Or you can vote for the Hindu woman who denies Jesus Christ. Yeah. She can't be a Hindu and accept Jesus Christ. That's right. Amen. The same as a so-called Jew can't be a true follower of Judaism That's if right. you accept the Christ. Uh -huh. That's not cheap. Yeah. Let's play fair. So I'm here to point out the error in humanity and hope people viewing would observe and be accounted for the truth of God's word and especially so when it comes to decisions like who's going to guide America in the years to come. Yes. You've got a choice again, Hindu woman who is not a Christian nope. or a President Trump who claims to be a Christian. I'd rather go for the one who claims to be a Christian than the one who is known to be a Hindu. All right. Because America was founded on Christian values. Yeah. When Franklin, Ben Franklin, who was one of the original forefathers of the Constitution, yes. was an atheist. Sure was. And he did not want to insert in the Constitution protection for the church. But they overruled him and put in that constitution that you can't persecute a person because of his religious belief. That's right. Yeah. Thank God for that. That's why we're able to speak freely with thus saith the Lord and this assembly. Right. And I thank God for that. Amen. So again, if you claim to be a Christian, show it in your vote yes. when it comes November. If you're not, that's going to show also. All right. So they had this uh, Taylor Swift, this famous uh, yes. singer. 
she announced today that, oh, I decided I'm going to follow. So what? <laughs> I mean, who, who cares what you believe? That's right, Father. Amen. Foolish people will pay $150, $200 for a ticket to see you uh -huh. sing a song, half undressed. Yep. They're not coming to hear you sing the song. Yep. They're probably coming to see you half undressed. Uh -huh. That's why you sing half undressed. That's right. You have no moral values. No. You openly brag about dating a man who you are not married to. That's right. That makes you a fornicator. So where is your grounds to tell people how to vote? All right, Father. You probably smoke dope. Yep. Might as well. If you sleep with a man you ain't married to, might as well go, might as well go all the way. <laughs> Amen. And you perform half new. Yes. So where is your recipe that you can tell the people who to vote for? All right. You can't say nothing, because you're a genuine first-class prostitute. Yes, uh, she is, Robert. Yes, but she is. Amen. Amen. How, by your behavior. Yes. See, a prostitute is not just one who stands on the street corner. Mm -hmm. A prostitute is any woman who goes to bed with a man and she's not married to. All right. That is what the Bible term is whore. All right. <laughs> You can be polite and say prostitute. All right. But it's still heading in the same direction. That's right. So, people who claim to be followers of Christ, let a man prove his own self. Yes. Whether he be of the faith. All right. You, November the 5th, we'll find out where you stand with Jesus. Now, a question was asked, uh, let me get these questions first about somebody drinking water. God didn't choose you. You chose yourself. Is this some kind of joke? What is wrong with water in a church? Sounds like you just want to flash around some kind of higher power. Well, I am trying to establish a higher power, and that power is God Almighty. Right, and the church belongs to God Almighty. That's right. So I guess the uh, saying I criticize somebody in church for drinking water. What if I did? I'm well within my rights. Amen. Church of God is not for you to bring a sandwich, a bottle of soda water, or a bottle of soda pop. It doesn't matter. Church is to come to worship and praise God. Amen. Right. But the, 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 they have fallen so far away from yeah. the respect of God till you let anything go. Yeah. When Moses was given the right to have the Torah, Yes. I believe he's on Mount Sinai. Yes. And he saw the bush ablaze, but there was no flame. And he stopped and said, let me see this great miracle. All right. How can this bush be on fire, but there's no actual flame? But when he stopped and God got his attention, and he explained to Moses, I'm going to make you a prophet. But before that, he said, pull your shoes off. All right. Amen. The ground you stand on is holy ground. Now, God has called him to be the first prophet. Yes. So he had to be found some importance in Moses. But he still told him to do something. Yes. Put your shoes off. In other words, you just can't come to me any old kind of way. Yes. Yes. Here's where I'm going with this. Back in the old days, you wore your best shoes to church. You had one suit of clothes, and that was for church. Right. You had one white shirt and one tie, and that was for church or somebody's funeral. Sure. The only time you wore your suit and your shine shoes and tie and white shirt was to church or funeral. That's right, yeah. To church is to show respect. And for a funeral, you're showing respect for someone who has departed. All right. So they always had a code of decency for the church of God. But you don't see that today. You can turn on TV and see a preacher preaching and he got blue jeans on and a, 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 a Air Jordans uh -huh. and, and a sweatshirt on. That's, right, uh -huh. That's not decent in order. Mm -hmm. Well, what does that got to do with go to heaven? It's got something to do with your respect for the house of God. Yes. Yeah. Preach. Let's get this thing right. All right. 
You don't come to church any kind of way. All right, brother. You don't bring your lunch to church and you go out to preach it. Preach it. Right. Everything's done decent and in order. Yeah. Yeah. But if you ain't got no respect for the house of God, you're going to do things that are not correct. Now, if you get out of order, the preacher's responsibility is to correct you. Yes. So that you don't do that again. Now, a lot of times people do that because maybe they just didn't know. Sisters had a dress. They wore to church. All right. Where no else. Them boys and little girls had clothes set aside. That's for Sunday. Mm -hmm. You go to church. Uh uh. You don't, you don't go out and play with that. Mm -mm. You don't play in that. Nope. That's for, sometimes you don't even go to school in it. All right. that, that, that's for church. Yeah. Sister had a pair of shoes. She wore to church. Right. Wasn't no high heels either. Nope. But if it was muddy, I shared with somebody the other night, they would take their good shoes and put them in a bag with their Bible and wear the old shoes to church. But when they got to the church for you, they'd take their old shoes off and put their nice shoes on. Oh. Then they'd go in, have a good time, shout, have a good time in church. But they're showing reverence for the church of God. Amen. So if I corrected somebody for drinking water in church, I did it out of love. Mostly for the church of God. Yes. So uh, you can uh, criticize me on that if you like. But thank God for keep watching. All right. And now you know. Oh, uh, did we have another letter? Yes, sir. There's two more. A true blessing that Prophet Walker popped up on my YouTube feed. I used to watch him in the 90s when I was just beginning my walk with the Lord. Mm -hmm. May God continue to bless all the true saints of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God for that. And the other one says, Hello, my name is Dwayne. I'm from Spartanburg. I recently moved from Michigan here to South Carolina. I have been watching some of your YouTubes these last few weeks after someone that I believe used to go to your church told me about it. I'm very interested in visiting and if possible, maybe joining the church. I was told that all the members had to live on church property. The problem is that I just signed a new lease at my apartment, but I'm trying to get on the right path and I would like to give to a church. And yours seems to be a great option as it meets my principles. I hope this will work. Well, praise God for that. Amen. Uh, no, you can join the church if you have a rental apartment. But what we recommend, if you join the church, you are part of the church family. Yes. And the Bible says they had all things in common or together, mm -hmm. then my instruction is why I pay 150, no, it's more than that, ain't it? Yes. Whatever it is to, to a rental agency, mm -hmm. if you can have a nice room on church property Hallelujah. and get that money that you pay rent to toward the church so that the church can progress and go forward in the name of Jesus. Right, now, we are not in the financial situation that we used to be in. So therefore, there's certain limitations that, or certain previous instructions that I can take another look at. Yeah. But the reason why we had said that rather than pay twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 a month rent, Ooh. give that money to the church. Oh, but that is not necessarily a commandment, but it will be taken into consideration if you don't follow those instructions, the reason why, and especially if you're single. So that, uh, like I say, that has to do with uh, the church, but it's not necessarily mandatory, and especially in this day and time that we're in since God is blessing us with so many blessings look like they're just overtaking us. Now, there was a time when it was needed. Thank God right now, a person can even cheat on their ties. I ain't going to get mad at you. But I'm going to tell you, God's going to get mad at you. When a man rob God, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Bring all the tithes into the stalls, saith the Lord, and prove me herewith that I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. There shall not be room enough for you to receive. So tithing was commanded by God. That is not your money. That 10% does not belong to you. You simply are a steward. You have first count on it. And what you do with it is up to you. 
But God said 10%. Tithe means 10. Yes. And I believe, who was it? Jacob said, I will give unto thee yes, a tenth yeah. of all. Of all right. I have. And that was from the gross. That wasn't from uh, after you pay all your bills. Yeah. You pay God his 10%. I don't care if you got a disconnect notice. Amen. Amen. Then you go and speak to the pastor. I got a disconnect notice. Did you pay your tithes? Yes. Okay. Well, let's see if we can pray our way through this. Hallelujah. And God ain't never failed, has he? Yes. Hallelujah. Even when they tried to close houses down. Yes. No, God stepped up to the place. Hallelujah. So true light is really blessed of God as the guiding light to the rest of the world. Now let me get to my text. I think I want to go to John chapter 10. My sheep. Verse 4. And when he put it forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him. And the sheep follow him. Now the sheep represents the church yeah. and the leader of the sheep or the shepherd is the Lord Jesus Christ the God of glory read and the sheep follow him for they know his voice the sheep follow him because what they know his voice uh -huh. read and a stranger will they not follow a strange voice they not going to follow when somebody is preaching you error in the Bible you ought to know that's error. Right. But if somebody's preaching you the truth, you ought to know that's a voice from heaven. So if you are spirit-led and spirit-guided and spirit-filled, you're going to follow the voice of God. You're not going to follow a stranger. This is why when we come to church, we have discipline within ourselves to follow the word of God. If God said to women, we're available, not only in church, but in public gathering. God said so for a reason. Come out from them and be separate. Where's it found? Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Jump right in verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate. When God establishes a church, y'all hear me close. Yeah. There has to be a code of instruction to create the separation. This is what makes the difference between holy and profane, or right and wrong. So within God's church, there's got to be an evidence of right and wrong. So he gives rules. Take it to yourself and to the doctrine. When doing this, you save yourself and them that will hear you. It's the doctrine or the teachings or the instructions that saves you. Because the doctrine tells you what to do and what not to do. And when you follow the doctrine, then this creates a separation with people who are not going to follow the doctrine. Read that again. Wherefore, come out from among them. Come out from among them. And be ye separate. And be ye separate. Saith the Lord. And yeah. touch not the unclean Wait, thing. who? The Lord. It's God speaking. Not me. It's God's word. Come out from amongst them and be ye separate. And what? And touch not the unclean things. The unclean things are people who are still in the life of sin. Still smoking cigarettes. Still drinking liquor. Yeah. I saw that commercial I shared with you the other day. Man holding up a liquor bottle talking about he's a Christian. Make sure you buy this bottle mm -hmm. of whiskey. I said, well, wait, now what is this for? People who gone so, have gone so far in blasphemy, I, I wonder if there's any such thing as right and wrong with modern people today. It seems like they don't know the difference between right and wrong. See, this is why true life is so important. You've got to tell the people the difference between clean and unclean, between right and wrong, what is sinful and what is not sinful. Yeah. You've got to tell the people this, because people obviously don't know. Right. So the Bible says to come out from amongst them, that means the world, relatives, loved ones, whoever, yeah. is not in your church. And I say to the young people, you meet a young man on the job, you invite him to church. All right, Bob. A young girl, invite him to church. That's right. If they say, oh, I got something to do this Sunday, fine. Don't call me. All right, Bob. I'll be yeah. But you, when you get ready to come to church, it ain't too late, call me. All right, yeah. If they don't never call you, they're missing something very valuable. Hallelujah. That's a saved person in the church of God. Well, you can go to work and you ain't got to worry about somebody sneaking in the back door. All right, Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Hold 
won't tell me. I know I'm telling the truth. Hallelujah. We today hold our value in such a low esteem, we got to stir up something within ourselves. Yes. We're valuable. Amen. We're not only valuable to the kingdom, we're valuable to the rest of the world. Amen. Are they watching us? You see the letters we read. Right. Even some of them don't like me with the dying, but they're still watching me. Yes. Hallelujah, that's the important thing. Keep on watching. Throw your stones all you want, but let me, that let me know you're still watching. And there's a reason why you're watching, since you don't like me too much. Right. You don't like true life too much, but you still keep watching. That's right. I guarantee you turn to something else off to watch true life. Uh -huh. Let me see what you're getting ready to say now. Oh, keep watching. Yeah. And pretty soon something will quicken in your heart. Next thing yeah. you know, you'll be sitting in the back. Then you look around, you're sitting in the middle. Hallelujah. Yeah. Later on, you might be sitting up in the front. <laughs> so we have to understand the value that we have in trying to teach people the right thing. Come out from amongst them and be separate means you cannot have a fellowship with anybody who is not connected with your church. I don't care if it's your natural brother, your natural Amen. sister, your natural mother, and your natural father. Yes. Courteous to them? Yes. Respect them? Yes. And love them in the natural. But don't love them more than the Word of God. Hallelujah. Because then you made a choice. Come out from among them, be separate, saith the Lord. And then you prove yourself unto God. Look at me, carrying my cross. Oh, it hurts me so bad to be separated from my cousins and from my best friends I went to school with. It hurts so bad. Yeah, but does it hurt more than that fire in hell? I don't right. think so. So make your calling and your election sure. Make up your mind within yourself. We have to understand, I know I'm on a mission for God. I don't care how young you are and how the, the cares of this world may fascinate you by watching certain things on TV and thinking, well, look, my goodness, look what I'm missing. You ain't missing nothing but a whole lot of fire down the road. You've got to make your calling your election sure. You've got to understand when you hear the voice of God, there's something you've got to do, and you've got to follow that voice. Jesus said, my sheep, possessive pronoun, my belonging to, yes. my sheep, hear my voice, and they're not going to follow no devil. And a stranger is a devil. They're going to follow me. If I tell them how to live, they're going to live like that. Yes. All right. And don't say it's too hard. It's not too hard. All right. It's very easy. Yes. If you make your calling and your election short. Now, if you vacillate, it's difficult. Because the Bible says you can't serve two masters. Amen. Either you the pleasures of this world, or you're going to serve the discipline of a holiness church. Yes. So I believe we in this church today have made up our mind and are going to follow God no matter the cost, natural cost. My sheep, hear my voice. And they're not going to follow a stranger. All right. All right. So let's make up our mind tonight. I'm not going back. Hallelujah. And don't let the devil blindside you and say, oh, my goodness. I don't know. I might be missing something. Let me try something. <laughs> don't never do that. All right, probably. The person who tried hair rod and put that needle in his arm tried it once. Yeah. And then what happened? Mm -hmm. I watch, I watch uh, that, that TV series. I watch it every night just about. Uh, cops. Yeah. As some man, I'm telling you, some of the most comical things. Yeah. Catch a man with dope dealer in his pocket and residue all on the truck. He said, "No, it don't belong to me." Said, well, how did you get in your pocket? I don't know who put it in my pocket. The police officer said, "Well, you tell that to the judge." Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. So it's amazing how people really. Did I tell y'all about the story about the man beat his wife with a baseball bat? Mm -hmm. I, did I tell you about that? No. Man went, got, wife put him in jail first. Hit, hit her with a baseball bat. And so when he went to court, the judge said, what happened? He said, sir, I can't tell you. He said, well, why? He said, well, you're not going to believe me. He said, well, you might well try me. He said, well, now, nah, you're not going to believe me. He said, I didn't hit her with the baseball bat. 
What happened, when she tried to take the bat out of my hand, she pulled it. When I turned loose, it hit her side of the head. And she kept pulling, and I turned it, it kept hitting her side of the head. And that's how she got the knots on her head. And the judge looked at him and said, uh, okay, that's what you're going to tell me. He said, well, I told you you wouldn't believe me. <laughs> so he told the man, he said, I'm going to give you 30 days anyhow. So I'm saying, some things is hard to believe, but people will create any kind of a lie or any type of a way to get out of a perfect situation. So I'm saying, sometimes you're around relatives and they'll tell you there's nothing wrong with you having a little drink. That's not, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody have a beer every now and then. But the Bible said, strong drink, drink is a rip of a truth. And, and, and a drunkard should not inherit the kingdom of heaven. And I tell you before, drunken don't mean staggering. Drunken means anything you take, if it ain't nothing but a swallow, if you take it to change your mental euphoria yes. and get a high, that's drunkenness in the sight of God. Because you're doing something, you're, it's an artificial stimuli that's changing your natural self. Yes. You change your natural self by getting an emotional high in church. That's why you get happy. That's why you keep clapping your head and stopping your feet. It makes you happy inside. Yes. But that's not artificial. Yes. That's you naturally getting happy in church. Amen. But when you drink something, oh my goodness. Don't tell me you can accept it and get drunk at home. And God understands. God understands first, but why are you drinking? All right. Why you got to get high? Well, it makes me feel better. But do you know in this earthly journey, you're not supposed to be feeling better unless your mind is stayed on Jesus? All right. The only happiness you get is from the promise. God promised me a heavenly reward. That's what makes me happy. It ain't happy going to work around and hold out the devils. They don't like you and you got to digest cigarette smoke and all that. that. That don't make you happy. And knowing you are persecuted because you go somewhere and you got a bail on. And you ain't got no lipstick on, looking like a clown. That's a mental barrier on your shoulders because you know other people claim, oh, boy, Max Factor makes me look so pretty. And they even got people who will purposely go to a place to get makeup put on rather than do it themselves. Movie stars and, and entertainers. Yes. They got people following around. Joyce Myers, case in point. Yeah. She don't put that lipstick on herself. She got a special hairdresser, follows everywhere she goes. Yes. For what? If you put a scarf on your head, a veil, tied nicely, pretty, it, that's what God told you to do. So you don't need no hairdresser. You don't need no makeup too. You don't need no, no earrings and things in there red. You paint it red and don't even know why you paint it red. Yes. The only thing you can say, everybody do it. Everybody don't do it. Hold your shirt, don't do it. So we today are example setters and we are so valuable to the world, God is literally sparing the world because of too light. I know what I'm saying. Yes. The prayer of the righteous spares the sinner, protects those who are yet in sin, who they might come in and hear the voice of God. Then they can't follow a stranger. Mm -hmm. They can't follow a hypocrite preacher on TV. All right. yeah. Tell me, T.D. Jakes is in a turmoil. Lost half his members and the, all of his prestige is just about God. People yes. know he's phony. And you got to sit around and have dinner with people who know you at phony. Right, well, hey, that's oh, that's man, that's deep. Yeah. <laughs> you got to have if somebody you invited to dinner because he may be a judge or a doctor or something, and know you look at you and know you um, kind of funny. You know? <laughs> that's tough to set up on. Hallelujah. Right, so thank God for true light, and thank God for the cross we have to carry, and the responsibility God has placed on our shoulder to take the word, follow the word of God, yes. and not follow a stranger. Yes. We can do it, we have done it, and we're gonna to continue to do it till God blows the trouble and calls us home. Ain't nobody here gonna backslide. All right. Ain't nobody here gonna back in the world.
and nobody here going to let the devil break them down. We're going to stand up and hold up that blood stain back. Hallelujah. And go to heaven with a smile on our face. We ain't got nothing to be sad about. There ain't no burden on us. Look at how God is blessing you through too late. Little too late. Oh, hallelujah. First people wanted to give us 47,000. Yeah. Woman called me up and said, oh, guess what? They took a second look and they turned it down. I started, I started getting a little bit down. I said, mm, mm-hmm. Now I know what the next offer gonna be. Oh, but they'll 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 give you forty five thousand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I just waited. Man, come along. See, I can't give you cash, but I give you fifty two thousand, so much an hour and so much a month. I said that'll work. Oh, yeah. Look. Matter of fact, it works better than the cash. Cash might go in a year or two, mm-hmm. but that. Money coming every month. Right, oh, goodness sake. Oh, yeah. You'd be surprised. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. That ain't nothing but God working. Right. Through his wisdom. Right. So, brothers and sisters, if you think we ain't valuable, you need to think again. All right. And if you still can't get no clarity, come up here and I'll talk to you personally. All right, if that ain't help, it won't help, I'm going to get some oil put on your head. All right, if that don't help, bye. <laughs> Lord, don't let me be. I want to be your friend. When my voice is done. Hold me by your side. When my faith is weak. We got some questions coming up. Y'all can see it. Well, it did pretty good. <laughs> All right, Elder Wagner, well, have fun. We're dismissed. And now to the YouTube viewers, again, just a few. A book that will change your whole life. If you're sincere in your heart of seeking truth yes. and righteousness, this book is more valuable than practically anything you'll read outside of your King James Bible. Yes. Go to YouTube, I mean rather to uh, Amazon, Amazon yes. and get this valuable book. Right, Easy to read and will change your whole life. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, first of all, I'd like to give honor to the Christ and give God glory. Amen. And also, double honor to the great prophet of the Lord, Prophet yes. Israel, oh, yes. and beautiful like Lady Mother Walker, all the house of the family, all the priests of the gospel. Had a great time. Oh, yes. Yeah. Lifting up the name of the Lord. And being taught by the best, God's best, amen. Yeah. I mean, we need to with nothing less. I remember the next and I'm great prophet. And I just want to say, uh, you know, first of all, thank you, prophet, for this powerful uh, teaching tonight, amen. And, uh, you know, when the word goes forth, amen, it is truly to set the captives free. I believe uh, King David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. Yes. You know, you got to have the word of God, amen, to know what pleases God. And that's all we're trying to do, please this great God, so we can get to that great place called heaven. Amen? Amen. Let's give our great prophet another powerful hand praise for the teaching tonight. Truly bless my soul. And thank God again for this powerful Bible study questions tonight. Amen, church, because it just lifts us up higher. And uh, as I stated before, and I know our great prophet has done the same, our babies, our children, no more than these false teachers out here. Amen. Why? Because they're false. We got the real thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Babies know they got to put a veil on their head, no makeup and jury in the true church. Now, you wear, you know, in the false church, get as much money as you want and all that, fine. But you're going to have to answer one day to this great God that told you what to do and what not to do. Yeah. But you can't do that if you don't have the spiritual leader to teach you. And I just want to quickly say that the prophet went to uh, St. John, the fourth chapter and tenth 
verse, and he talked about the great church. Mm -hmm. And he called this great church God's sheep. Amen. And a stranger they will not follow. Yeah. You know, being persecuted on the job and all these demons, as he stated. Uh, and then Taylor, what? Swift. And then you've got somebody who's supposed, I don't know, in love with her. Kelsey, a great football team that somebody's going to have to answer to because this woman, I mean, she's known all over the world for being a whore. Mm -hmm. But they're looking up to her. Yep. And I want to say this. True Light daughter is not looking up to you Amen. if you're watching us. Hallelujah. We don't care nothing about you other than one thing, that you turn your heart to Christ. Amen. And come in before it's everlasting too late. Yep. You laugh now, but I believe the Bible said that uh, in the end, Jesus is going to last when your calamity comes. Yeah. Right. You don't want that. You want to follow Prophet Bishop H. Walker and see God's face in peace. Amen. And then Prophet also told us that you've got to leave those people alone. If it be family members, I left all my family members alone. All of them, every one of them. But I want them saved, but they, that's up to them, right? And then also, Matthew 15 and 14, Jesus says, let them alone. Now, here's God himself tell you, leave them, things, leave them people alone. And he said something that was that's really amazing to me. He said, they're unclean. Yeah. You mean to tell me my family members, some of them are unclean? All of them, if they don't want holiness. They're, uh, the Bible said they're unclean. And I want to say this in closing. Uh, I like what Donald Trump, many things Donald Trump said last night because he didn't pull no punches. All right. They don't like that. But we do. Why? Because as Prophet stated, he's against baby murder. That's right. He's against a man twitching, trying to act like a woman when God said, male and female, hey, yeah. made he them. Yeah. And told him to do, do what? Get married and have babies. Right. Mm, I, I almost said it. Look, men trying to act like women can't have no babies. I don't care how much you cut off or so on. Amen? That's, right. That's why we tell people the truth. Right. You don't like us, but we love it. So anyway... I just love this church, and I love the great prophet. We ought to love our church and stand behind our great prophet. Everything he does, everything he says, is worth listening to. Amen? Amen. Come on, church. Let's give our great prophet another good big man's praise. Hallelujah. I told you we got God's best. And I got it. Amen. Amen. Lift up our hearts with our hands toward heaven. May the Lord watch between me and thee, while we're absent, one from another. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name.